Greetings everyone. Today I will talk about Saturn. It's finally time. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What is the black cube? And is Saturn Satan? Is Saturn the Demiurge? I believe I have quite some authority on this issue as I am a shamanic practitioner with the stellium in Capricorn. Considering Saturn rules Capricorn, I have a very intimate relationship with this planet and this entity. I would certainly say that I know more about this subject than most people. First off, we can look at the physical incarnation of Saturn, which is the actual planet which we can see. Saturn is the last planet which is visible with the eyes. In other words, Saturn is at the threshold of the visible and the invisible, the physical and the spiritual world. The notable physical characteristics of Saturn is of course the ring and then the hexagonal North Pole. The hexagon on the North Pole is actually a storm, which we can call the eternal storm. However, those that understand the symbolic language of the universe will see something more significant here. In Greek mythology, Saturn is known as Kronos, who is a titan. The description of titans seem to suggest that the planets are the titans. This is similar to how the giants might be the planets in Norse mythology. And it's described that the planets, the titans and the gods are at war with each other. We also see that the outer planets are supposedly older and give birth to the inner, younger planets. This suggests that this is how divine consciousness is being translated to the means of the planets towards the core of the sun. Kronos is the son of Uranus and Gaia, who is the mother earth. Kronos overthrew his father and castrated him. The genitals of his father would not be the last things he would cut as he is usually depicted with a sickle or a scythe, and is also the god of harvest. In the legend, Kronos learns from Gaia, Earth, that one of his sons is destined to overthrow him. So, to prevent this, Kronos eats all of his sons. However, Gaia tricks Kronos by giving him a rock to eat instead of Zeus, and Zeus manages to escape and will later overthrow his father. In Roman mythology, Saturn is the equivalent of Kronos. The most important thing here is probably Saturnalia, which is a festival in December and is perhaps one of the biggest festivals in Rome. This was a time of feasting, role-playing, free speech and gift-giving, quite similar to Christmas in some days. This is also where we saw the weekday or Saturday being named after Saturn. In ancient days, we actually believed that Saturday used to be the last day of the week and not Sunday. In other words, Saturn represented the end of things. Very similar with the harvest motif, where things are harvested, eaten, but then reborn in some other fashion. This also fits with how Saturn is at the threshold of the visible and the invisible. Saturn was also associated with the Roman deity Janus, who was the god of ends and beginnings and portals, representing the transition from the old year to the new year. This also fits with Capricorn, which is the zodiac ruled by Saturn. People born in the sign of Capricorn are born in late December and early January. As such, Capricorn also represents the transition from the old to the new. Capricorn is also the tenth zodiac sign. This is significant because in the Western world we use a base 10 system, meaning that after 10 we start to repeat numbers again. So 10 is also the last number. And of course we have 10 fingers and 10 toes. 10 is also significant as 1 times 0 equals 0. So the number will start at the beginning. 10 is both the end and the beginning at the same time. It's at the threshold just like Saturn. In mythology, Capricorn was more associated with Pan, the Greek god of the wilds. And then I also believe 
Dionysus, which fits with the Saturnalia motif. However, the important symbology with Capricorn is that Capricorn is not only a goat, but is a goat-fish hybrid. The goat represents material form, and the fish represents non-material form, the spirit realm. So Capricorn is able to transition between material and non-material realms. In other words, Capricorn is able to transition beyond Saturn and then back. Saturn is the portal between the material and the non-material world. The waters are a series of constellations in the sky with Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. All these three zodiac signs have a water motif and the water generally represents the spiritual realm, the afterlife, the formless realm. However, to access this realm, one must leave the physical body behind. In modern quantum physics, I believe we can see this with particles and waves as well. The physical goat is the particle and the spiritual water fish is the wave. The quantum potential field has infinite possibilities of how it can be expressed. It is by the will and the perspective of the magician who ventures to this realm that then collapses the wave function into a particle. This is in essence how we create our physical reality through our minds. However, to do this in a deliberate way, such as in magic practice, the practitioner must venture beyond Saturn to the realm of infinite possibilities in the quantum field. And of course, to do this, you must first pass through the gatekeeper, which is Saturn. The spiritual realm is also a place beyond time, without time, where all points of time exist simultaneously. It's only before Saturn, where Saturn has power, where time exists. Similarly, it's only before Saturn that physical form exists. In other words, Saturn is both the creator of the earth element, the physical form, and also the creator of time. These are both restrictions of our true spiritual form. So Saturn is also known as a planet of restrictions. We can see this very clearly with the ring around the planet. The ring restricts. We also know that there is a duality between Saturn and Jupiter. Saturn represents restrictions, while Jupiter represents expansion. So they are like yin and yang. It is for this reason that there are some concerns that Saturn might be known as what the Gnostics call the Demiurge and could even be Satan. This is true in some respect that Saturn is responsible for the illusion of the material world and the illusion of time. In Hindu astrology we also know that Saturn is the planet of Maya, illusion, and Saturn is also known as the great malefic planet where Mars is the lesser malefic planet. Conversely, Jupiter is known as the great benefic planet. In Hindu astrology, we also know that Saturn is associated with the root chakra, the Muladhara chakra, which represents the earth element. Funnily enough, the planet earth or Gaia is not just of the earth element, rather the earth is where all the different elements are mixed. See my previous video on the five elements. The strange way that we know that Saturn is responsible for creating the Earth element is through the hexagonal storm on the North Pole of the planet. The hexagon is a two-dimensional image, but when viewed from a 3D perspective, it makes a cube. And indeed, the cube is the platonic solid of the Earth element. This is usually depicted as a black cube, as black, of course, is the color of Saturn. Other colors associated with Saturn might be brown, dark blue and yellow, usually black and gold. To further understand this, we can see that all the planets are responsible for different faculties of our earthly life. For example, Venus is responsible for love and feelings of romance and sex. Jupiter is responsible for philosophy and commerce. Saturn simply happens to be responsible for creating the earth element. Saturn creates the skeleton, the stage, for our earthly life here. Saturn is also responsible for restrictions and order, keeping things in control. We can especially see this this year, 2020, 
as at the beginning of this year, almost all planets were in Capricorn, the sign of Saturn. And indeed, all of us have been severely restricted this year. Coronavirus in itself restricts the breathing of the human body. Our movement, freedom and everything has been restricted this year. The earth element itself is restrictive, it is limiting. However, again, I think this is simply a matter of perspective. It doesn't make Saturn evil necessarily, as being in this restrictive state makes certain things possible that wouldn't be otherwise. In other words, by restricting ourselves, we can be more free in some other ways. At the end of the day, we wouldn't be able to be here and have this human experience without Saturn. We wouldn't be able to swim, feel the sun on our face, eat peanut butter and jelly, and everything else that is done in the physical world. The idea of Saturn creating the Earth material reality goes back much further and much deeper than just the cube. I believe we see this already in the Bible, as it's described that God creates the Earth in seven days. Now why is seven days important and how does it relate to Saturn and the hexagon? For any of you familiar with the flower of life pattern, this is also known as the creation pattern. To explain the flower of life pattern, we can see that the central flower of life is made from six interlocking circles and you could say a seventh one in the middle. A circle represents a day. Indeed a day is a circular event that begins again and again. In other words, the flower of life was made by seven circles. One invisible circle in the middle, which is of course the last day where God rested. And of course the flower of life has six petals, fits perfectly into the hexagon of Saturn. Furthermore, we can see a circle as being feminine, as it is round in nature. It is the feminine which is creating, giving birth. When we expand the flower of life pattern, we get a larger structure, a web. We can then combine every middle of each circle with a masculine straight line. When we have done this, we get something called Metatron's cube, indeed another cube. This can also be seen as a four-dimensional hypercube. It is said that this pattern includes all mathematical information in the universe. Most importantly, we can see that Metatron's cube contains all the platonic solids. Physicist Robert James Moon proved that all atomic structures are configured by the platonic solids. In other words, all particles, all matter is configured by the platonic solids, which stems from Metatron's cube, which stems from the flower of life pattern, which fits perfectly with Saturn, the hexagon. Furthermore, I believe that the bearded old man motif is Saturn, as this is always how Saturn is depicted as an old man with a long beard. This is the classic Christian God, or at least the Old Testament God. I can also confirm this from my personal shamanic experiences with Saturn. My personal favorite depiction of Saturn is the character of Urizen from William Blake's mythology and poems. He is considered the embodiment of reason, logic and laws. He is depicted as a bearded old man who often bears the tools of an architect. He creates and constrains the universe in nets and webs of laws and restrictions, and he represents conventional society and rules. Again, in astrology, the tenth house represents the house, our position in society, and the tenth house does of course correspond to the house of Capricorn. Considering the old man motif, and the seven days, I actually believe that the Old Testament God is Saturn. It is not the one true God, but just Saturn, which only creates material reality. Of course, Saturn is a part of the one God, which everything is, but it still is only just Saturn. Furthermore, when we read the Old Testament, we see a very vengeful and jealous God that is really not all loving in any sense. He's paranoid, kills people, tricks people, and all other sort of horrible things. This is certainly not the all-loving child of Christ, but this is Saturn who created 
the earth or at least the material aspects of earth to go even further into this connection we see some very clear connections with saturn and the hexagon and the cube with the jewish people and their symbolism take a quick look at the star of david and you will see the hexagon and of course the jews essentially only read the old testament plus other verses from the torah this is made blatantly obvious by the tefillin which is a literal black cube which some jewish rabbis wear on their forehead it really could not be more obvious than this we also see the same symbolism in islam looking at the kaaba in mecca which is a literal black cube which people gather around and circle around we see a literal simulation of saturn where the black cube is saturn and the people circling around it are the rings of the planet mecca is of course the most holy city in islam and the black cube here represents the house of allah then the question arises is the black cube being worshipped or are these people simply trying to pass through saturn to the spiritual realm i admit that i am not familiar enough with jewish and islamic traditions to say a clear answer but i know that there are at least many elites in the world that do actually worship saturn i think saturn as all the planets deserve to be worshipped to a little degree as they do great work however saturn is also an obstacle to be overcome and should not be just worshipped we can see even deeper symbolism with saturn worship in some other occult organizations most notably the freemasons however this requires some deeper understanding now let's look at the magic square of saturn which is well almost a cube in itself i explained some important motifs about this in my last video about the four elements so check it out the magic square of saturn makes an additional sum of 15 in each direction even diagonally for those of you familiar with tarot you will know that the 15th major arcana card is indeed the devil card and this is the trump card of capricorn which again is the zodiac of saturn in other words saturn is being represented by the devil indeed it is the deceiver which deceives us into thinking that material reality and time is real when it's really not this tarot card might also symbolize excessive indulgence in material things however i really like the original version in the rider white tarot deck here we see a man and a woman trapped by the devil however if you look closely enough you will see that the collars are big enough that they could simply take them off without any problem and walk away so they are not really trapped they simply believe that they are trapped it's all about you believing that you are trapped when you really are not but you could simply walk away so really it's not the devil that is the enemy but it's yourself and your own beliefs Returning to the Masonic interpretation of this kind of magic squares or cubes, we can draw lines from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we will get a sigil. This sigil is known as the sigil of Asesol. Asesol is known as the demon of Saturn, and it's a biblical figure, and it's described as one of the worst demons, a demon which all sins can be attributed to. Asaiso famously taught people how to forge weapons and armor. Now if you take a look at the sigil of Asaiso and, uh, and the symbol of the Freemasons, you can probably make some conclusions. The use of mathematical ciphers such as magic squares is also very common in Masonic circles. There's also a very interesting connection to Taoism and Chinese divination as it seems that they independently came across this magic square. In China this is known as Luo Shu and according to legend a sage saw a magic turtle with the magic square on its back. In Chinese astrology one of the great constellations is also called the black tortoise. This corresponds to Capricorn. As I explained in my previous video, the 5 in the middle of the square is the number of man, it's where we are. The 8 other squares are then the 8 different directions. This corresponds to the 8 triagrams 
in the Chinese Book of Changes. Another important symbolism of Saturn is that Saturn is known as the Black Sun. This is because Saturn emits invisible things such as time, gravity and magnetism as opposed to the sun which emits only visible things. This also fits with the motif of Saturn being a portal to the spiritual realm as Saturn will be the sun which you pass through to the invisible world. Many cultures have had a black sun symbolism. I believe one of the most recent ones is the one we see at the Nazi headquarters. This might seem like a stretch, but I believe when we look at the Nazis in general, they are very Saturnian, very order focused, very restrictive in their demeanor. This is classically Saturnian. I cannot claim to understand all these things, but considering how much the Nazis hate the Jews and how much the Jews hate the Muslims, and they all seem to be Saturn worshippers, I can only conclude that they are all fighting to monopolize the power of Saturn, but I don't really know. The most important part that I want to communicate is not really anything about anything in the outside world, such as cultures or religions. But it's really about what this means to you. If you look carefully, you will see that it is not only the material earth element, which is the black cube, but look at your phone, your computer, your house that you live in. It's all really more or less a black cube. It's restricting you from your true spiritual form. I would sincerely urge you to stop focusing on any negative things, such as conspiracy theories, and focus on yourself. What does the black cube mean to you? What is it trying to communicate to you? This is really not about any big conspiracies or apocalypse or satanic cults or anything like that. This is really about you. It has always been about you and it will always be about you. The hexagon and the cube are trying to teach us to think in different dimensions, see different spatial relations, and I believe this is trying to push us to think in a four-dimensional way. Now we can say that the fourth dimension is time also. And indeed, to go beyond Saturn, you will have to go beyond the idea of time. One of my favorite movies is Arrival, which was also based on a great short story. I sincerely think everyone should watch this movie. Here some aliens come to Earth and they try to communicate to humans that there is no such thing as time, but that all points of time exist simultaneously, and that we can more or less time travel with our minds. This is also similar to what Jesus says in the Bible. He says, ask for it and believe that you already have it, and it shall be yours. In other words, we shouldn't wait for future events or things to make us happy or fulfilled. We should understand that all our dreams already are true. Everything we wish for is already there in the infinite time-space continuum, which exists now. In other words, don't be attached to the past or future, but live in the eternal present moment where all points of time and space exist simultaneously. Really, the black cube is you unfolding yourself. It is your narrow and egoic mind which is opening itself to higher realms, to higher lines of thought. So it is you who must make this journey yourself and slowly leave your physical body, leave the past behind, leave the material things behind. And I will not claim, and I will not try to tell you exactly how anything is. I urge you to make your own conclusions about these things. And I believe there are many different perspectives that are all equally valid. For example, you can see Saturn as Satan, as the deceiver, which traps us here. But again, we can see Saturn as the one who makes this life possible. All the unique and great things in this human experience are made possible by Saturn. Time might be an illusion, but without time you wouldn't have time for anything, obviously. You wouldn't have time to relax, to laugh, to be with your friends, listen to music or anything. It only is possible because of the illusion of time. In the end, you are the one who decides what the truth is. Is Saturn devouring you an evil act? Or is he freeing you from your physical body? 
Is he the great Demiurge which we should defeat, just like Zeus did? Or is Saturn Dionysus and the god of harvest who allows us to drink wine and have great parties, which we usually do on Saturday, Saturn's Day? Another great popular movie depicting Saturn is Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. Here at the end of the movie, an astronaut falls into Saturn and he accesses a four or five dimensional space where he can contact his daughter through time and space. There is also the film series Cube where a group of people are trapped inside of a cube and they have to find a way out or they will die. The insignia of the Empire in Star Wars is also made like a hexagon and they are obviously very Saturnian. They are very orderly, restrictive and organized. We also know that the design for the Death Star is designed after one of Saturn's moons. And if you look hard enough, you will find a lot, and I mean a lot, of references to Saturn in other media. Those who have come all the way to Saturn will be able to see through the illusion. You will be able to see the spectacle that this world is a holographic simulation. Saturn and the other planets are sort of like projectors that project divine consciousness in a certain way so that we can have this certain experience on Earth. But going through Saturn, you will see it through this illusion and you will see the world for what it truly is. And if you truly go through Saturn and leave behind your physical body, you will be free from the illusion completely. Question is, do you want to? Does it really matter? That's up to you. I'm a bit wary to trust people that are obviously worshipping Saturn. But as the Jews say in this prayer, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Is this really true or just another deception? Again, you decide.